Today we're just going to have a quick look at using Race HQ to time some non-gated races without any hardware connected, so purely just the software. So I've just come into Pack. So I've got Sprint, Pack, RFID, and other ones. I'm just choosing Pack to do my distance races. So whether this is an 800 meter, 1500 meter cross country or even a sprint race, um, just depending on how you want to do it. So no hardware connected, purely just this laptop. And so turn all my gates off, nothing else connected, no timing hub connected, and I just go race. Once I'm in go race, to start a race, I've got an option. I can use the start button on the screen, but it's also telling me I can use the control key on my keyboard to start a race. This is generally what I use when I'm timing because I can be a bit uncoordinated with my mouse, particularly when I look away from the screen, turn my head to have a look where the starter is and I can move the mouse off the start button. So we made the start key control. So I'm just going to hit the control key now. Just started a race. Now that the race is running, I haven't selected an a distance yet or an event, I don't have to, not until I press save, so we can either select it now or later, so I'll go now, now I'm just going to hit the, I can hit the trigger button on the screen, I tend to find that not as responsive as using the shift key, that's me hitting the shift key, not the trigger, now that I've got some times on the screen, even though the race is still running, it will let me come in here and key in some athlete names. So I can either key the number in and it'll find the best fit, or I can type in a name and find the best one of those that I want to use. Notice the race is still running. I can also, while I'm in this field here, hit the shift key and create some more times, choose the one I want, and so on. So we'll see here it's got the age, gender, place column. I can turn that off if I don't care about the age, gender, place, it's more just about outright places. Then by clicking on edit column I can come down here turn off the AGC place and just make it overall place. So now we've got first, second, third, fourth, fifth and so on. It's also telling me that these are all manual and that my start was also manual with the M in there. If there was an E in a bracket then that would mean it was electronic start. But as I said before we're doing this full manual, no wireless, anything, just a laptop and a bunch of times that we're creating and names that we've pulled down. Just a reminder about how to get your latest members onto the system. Hit the um, cog up the top for the settings. Come in here to where it has web. Hit refresh. That is now bringing down my latest members, the PB, records, events, and results. If I had never pressed this button, it would then, after hitting refresh, allow me to find my center. And then I have to put in my password. Most people are using users, so you'd have to tick this box and also put in your username and your password. Then you hit refresh to pull in the data. So always got to hit refresh if you want it to bring the information down to your laptop. You can have this option turned on, which will allow it to automatically hit refresh when the app starts up. So it saves you having to come in here and press that button. Um, just depending on how you prefer to, to have your laptop set up. So this has all happened. I can just put in somebody else's name. So it can just be Visitor Jack and the system will be fine with that. I'll also be fine with just leaving things empty. I don't have to fill everything out. <clears throat> so just choose that event and I'm just, it's also telling me that there's potential records here. So I'll just press stop and I'll press save. 
we're now into the next race. It's just printing off a, um, a ticket for me if I had that set up with my printer. And then we're ready for the next race. If I wanted to go and have a look at the saved event, so someone just asked me a question about that event, I'd come up here to the saved events icon. Here it has all the athletes, sorry, all the times that didn't have a known athlete. So there was a bunch of blanks I left there, plus also I wrote in Visitor Jack. If I found out later on that Visitor Jack was actually... Um, I'll just put a number in, 564, it's actually Noah, um, then that would now mean next time I came to this screen, Noah wouldn't be in that line. So if I come out of that screen and come back in, Noah's now gone because he's a, a known entity. He's not a missing entry. There's a bunch of reports you can bring up, but we'll just go straight to the race, or I can click on the hyperlink here. And it takes me straight to this race. So here are those athletes. I can make this bigger. <clears throat> and that's that's how we've just ran a race. So this is my saved events. That's all done. I can jump out of here. If I need to edit something, we'll add in another name. So I'll add in Tim. And I'll add in... 34, <clears throat> doesn't seem to know 34, um, once I'm finished with that, then I just close out of here or I can re-upload, if it uploads and there's information here, then it says it was able to, <clears throat> in this case there wasn't any matching age gender events for this profile. So I'm just close out of here, and we're back to the race screen. So I can go and run another race by hitting the control key, hitting the shift key to finish, and putting names or numbers in here. Thanks for your time. That's how you run a non-gated or a pack race without any wireless hardware, just purely the software and a laptop. Thanks for your time.